Welcome back my friends to an episode of my weekly mobile gaming recap series full of absolutely amazing games for you, me and everyone else who would never touch Raid Shadow Legends with a 10 feet selfie stick. And today those games include an awesome single player RPG, one of the best arcade games I've ever played, an absolutely massive sci-fi simulation game and a fun casual drifting game. I'm gonna try something new this week by the way by letting you know at the end of the video which game was my favorite of the week so as you're watching head down there to the comment section and let me know which game was your favorite or which game you think you would enjoy playing the most and then at the end of the video maybe we'll will have ended up picking we will wow english maybe at the end of the video we will have ended up picking the same game but don't cheat though don't you dare cheat <laughs> so head down there before you get to the end and what better way to start off a great week than with the witcher tales throne breaker which is a single player story driven deck building rpg with card based combat and then a huge open world full of interesting stories npcs and monsters to explore the game has a walk around an open 2D world to find hidden treasures, talk with NPCs, recruit new companions, and of course, fight monsters. Combat is similar to Gwent, which means that it's a card-based system where we have to win two out of three rounds to win the fight. This system is incredibly well made and it forces us to constantly adapt our strategy to how the opponent is playing and find synergies to utilize. Now, the actual cards we use during combat are called companions and we unlock and buy these as we progress in the game. Buying new companions costs gold and wood, which we can find scattered through the world and these are the same resources that we also use to upgrade our camp tent, which gradually unlocks new features such as, for example, the ability to talk to our recruits to learn more about their story and the mysteries of the game's universe. And the game really does have an awesome story that really makes it feel as if we're living in the Witcher universe. We're even asked to make various decisions throughout the game, which leads to a total of 20 different endings to explore. The art style, the music, and the fantastic voiceovers all add to the gameplay experience and they're perfectly ported from the PC version of this game. The only slight downside is that the UI shown when picking up resources is rather small here in the mobile version. Thronebreaker is free to try for about an hour, after which the full game can be unlocked through a single 9.99 in app purchase. You need to be online to play, it takes up 2.7 GB of space, and the full version offers about 30 hours of gameplay. It's absolutely one of the best deck builder narrative driven RPGs on mobile though, so it's an easy recommendation. So did you notice how I started this video off with a harmless and fun game that I thought most of you would enjoy? Well, my friends, that's over now because we're about to get inception level funky here with a game called Circle Affinity, which is an incredibly unique arcade platform-like game where we make our way through an infinite series of circles in an experience that the game's indie developer describes as a love letter to circles. So the way this plays is that our character starts on the outside of the edge of a circle. Tapping a button while standing on a very specific part of this circle lets us enter it so we can run around on the inside of the edge instead. Now the inside may contain any enemies that we have to avoid while trying to perfectly time a jump so we can reach the small circle rotating in the middle, at which point this loop perfectly repeats itself. If it sounds confusing, it's because it kinda is, but this infinite layer of circles is what creates one of the most unique arcade experiences I've ever had on mobile. But wait, there's more, because if we stand still for too long in this game, there's even a monster that will appear and kill us, which means we have to hurry our way through the circles to survive the game. So that's the core gameplay loop, and the goal is essentially just to get as far as possible with new game modes unlocking every 25th level as well. And I gotta say, the funkiness of this game is really well thought out. We can also unlock 60 different color palettes that each give the game a slightly different feel, and some of these may even increase the difficulty by making the enemies harder to recognize. Circle Affinity monetizes through showing banner ads on the death screen, incentivized ads to double our score, and then occasional instantly skippable forced ads. The advertisements aren't pushed heavily, but there is unfortunately no way to pay to remove them. You can play the game offline, it takes up only 76 megabytes of space, and it's honestly just a fantastic arcade game, so I hope you'll go check it out if you like this genre. Next up, we have an absolutely massive game that I think is pronounced Infinite Lagrange, which is a new PC and mobile cross-platform sci-fi simulation game about building a fleet of spaceships to explore and exploit a real-time open-world space for resources and, of course, rage war against NPCs and other players. Now, the game focuses primarily on grand-scale simulation, which means that we expand our space station and we do also direct our fleets where to move or attack, but the combat itself happens automatically once we've engaged an enemy. The game features lots of different types of spaceships to build that all serve different strategic purposes during combat or exploration, and they can each even be expanded in various ways and customized with different weapons, which adds a bit of optional min-maxing. The art style is very nice, and I found the UI to be relatively intuitive and easy to understand as well, which makes it fast to move between our base, our fleets, and all the different menus in the game. Infinite Lagrange monetizes through in-app purchases to instantly acquire spaceship blueprints and to speed up the time 
it takes to build spaceships and expand our station. So this does add a pay to progress fast aspect to the game, but on the bright side, the action points needed to attack and mine resources cannot be acquired through in-app purchases, which limits the pay to win advantages that paying players have over us free players. You need to be online to play the game, it takes up 1.9 gigabyte of space, and paying players definitely have an easier time dominating the end game, but the game still offers an interesting space simulation experience that can be enjoyed by free players who enjoy the resource management aspect and the space expansion gameplay. But if you hate sci-fi just as much as I dislike Earl Grey tea, then here's something that hopefully leaves a better taste in your mouth, and it's a game called Tofu Drifter. And this is a beautiful and fun racing game about producing and delivering tofu orders while drifting as much as possible to earn XP and gold used to upgrade our business. One of the biggest reasons I included this game this week is that the drifting just feels amazing in this game, but we do have to be super careful because if we hit any objects as we drift down these randomly generated tracks, our tofu gets damaged and we earn less XP and gold as a result of that. And we do need all this gold and XP because between deliveries we can buy new vehicles and upgrade our tofu production speed, our storage capacity and our office which unlocks new tracks and increases the max order count. This is one of those games where it takes a while to reach the higher levels since the game is rather grindy but it also features many different track types and difficulties that prevents it from growing repetitive. The main downside is that when all the orders have been delivered we kind of just have to wait around for new ones to arrive which takes 5 minutes and can be sped up by watching an advertisement. The controls were very easy to get used to in this game and the dreamy low poly art style combined with the music that becomes quieter when we slow down and louder when we speed up helps create a very immersive experience. Tofu Drifter monetizes through incentivized ads to gain extra orders and acquire bonus XP and gold when finishing a level but there are no forced ads and no in-air purchases. It can be played offline, takes up 165 megabyte of space and the gameplay is great but waiting for orders does limit the maximum play session length which may frustrate some of you guys. So my favorite game this week was definitely Thronebreaker and I think I'll have to follow that up with Circle Affinity but do let me know what you thought about these games in the comment section down below this video. And then a huge shout out and a thank you to Mohamed Khan and Farm RPG, who are two of my patrons who won a shout out this week. And if you also want to support all my mobile gaming content creation here on YouTube and the development of mini review, then head over to my newly created Patreon page, link in the description box down below, to see all the exclusive rewards over there. But most importantly of all, thank you very much for watching till the end of this video. That is still absolutely the best way to support this channel. So thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you'll have an absolutely great rest of your day. And until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around. Next up is an absolutely massive game that I think is pronounced Enfinite. <laughs> Okay. Next up is an absolutely massive game that I think is pronounced massively, massively, <laughs> no, not massively. Now the game focuses primarily on grand scale simulation, which means we expand our space station. <clears throat>